So first demo I'm gonna, um, is a demo with a Raspberry Pi and a, a Geiger counter. Um, so the setup here is a, um, a Raspberry Pi, of course, running the Wolfram language. Um, the Raspberry Pi is connected to a, um, a Geiger counter from a Spark Fun company, that, which is over here. And the um, communication happens over uh, serial communication. So you do, uh, I'll show you in a script real quick like how it works. But at first I wanna just kinda show you, since this is up and running, and I don't wanna press my luck too much. So um, at the moment, it's using a scheduled task to basically uh, accumulate, count the number of uh, hits um, that the Geiger, Geiger counter has. And you can see this little uh, green, line hit, green light here, that's the counter of the number of uh, radioactive hits. So right now, I got this, uh, this watch that I got from Teo's Gray's uh, Cabinet of Curiosities. Uh, a lot of scary things in there, but if if, if I take it, <laughs> if I take that, uh, you know, away, then it, it just goes to zero, or sometimes there will be one blip, right? And so you can kind of see that, you know, the Geiger counter, you know, it basically works. If I s if I stick it right in front of there, and let me adjust, right? So now it's sitting right in front of this uh, copper tube, which is actually doing the, um, you know, the counting, um, and I'll. I'll show you the script in just a second. Let me just do the the other thing, which is much more radioactive. <laughs> it's a piece of, uh, uh, I don't want to touch it for too long, but people ate from these things. It's called Fiesta Ware. Um, and apparently this was a popular dish to eat from in the 1930s. Um, so you could see that that watch, it, it goes up to about 120 if you stick it really close. So let's see what, you know, what this goes up to. Um, So that goes to, oop, that goes to 251, as you can see, and it, you know, the, the, the count is quite high. <laughs> I'll, I'll just want to show you at least the script real quick, you know, how this works. Um, so, so real quick, um, you open a serial port with device open. Uh, in the case of a Raspberry Pi, the device name is USB zero and you have to set the baud rate that the you know, manufacturer specified here. Um, then device read buffer basically reads everything out of the buffer. Um, you set some, you know, you set T is zero and the delta is five seconds. Print out the table. And then you run a scheduled task every five seconds, which is T delta. And then every five seconds you, you know, you print out the, uh, the current time and the count. So you, you, read, you do a device read buffer of from the serial again and you count the number of 49s because that's the character code for one and it, it, that's how it comes, so that's, that's where that number 49 comes from. Um, okay, the, I, I think I'm gonna leave it at that, so, because we got Ian coming up next and he's gonna do a demo with an Arduino and a, um, a force, um, you know, like a, a, a Newton meter, what do you call it, what do you call it? A force sensor. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs> All right, thank you. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Ian Johnson, and I will be presenting how to use uh, an Arduino and specifically a Vernier force sensor uh, with the Wolfram language in Mathematica. Um, and so here is a live plot of a reading from this sensor um, as we as we manipulate it, basically. Um, so as you can see, as we push and pull on the sensor, these, these readings are taken from the Arduino and they're put right in Mathematica for us. Um, and so I'll quickly explain what an Arduino is. An Arduino is a small hobbyist electronics platform that you can use to uh, hook up to all sorts of hardware devices. You can hook, hook it up to motors, sensors, LEDs, you know, all sorts of physical hardware things. And so now using my drivers, uh, you can use all of, you know, the physical hardware world that is the Arduino, you can use that all within Mathematica. 
Um, and I think it's pretty cool. One of the cool things about the Arduino is that it's an open source platform, and so there's lots and lots of work that lots and lots of people have done on, um, on building various shields, like, for example, we're using the SparkFun Vernier interface shield here. Uh, you can get lots of other shields that people have built, and there are libraries written for these um, shields that, you know, people have, there, there's a lot of work that has been put into various things for this. So what's powering my Arduino driver is what's called the device framework. The device framework is a new feature to Mathematica 10. Uh, it's a, basically a standardized set of commands like device open, device read, device configure, etc. Um, that can be used with many, many devices. And specifically here, we're using it with the Arduino. Um, and so here, I'm going to read from the Vernier Arduino object. And so that's the voltage on analog pin zero, and that's the digital state of pin two. And here I can go and I can write a value of one to turn the LED on, and I can write a value of zero to turn it off. Yep. Um, and so we can do other cool things. We can, here's a vertical gauge of, of the force sensor. You can see that. Um, so there are lots of, once you get this data into Mathematica, you can do all sorts of things like it. Uh, one cool fun device framework function here is the device read time series. Um, and so for the next two seconds, it'll take data readings, and we can go and we can plot that. Or, we, well, this is kind of boring and straight line because nothing moved in two seconds. But all of the, t the cool time series functions that you know, um, you can actually use this with live data that you collect um, right inside Mathematica. Um, and so another cool thing about uh, my driver firmware is that uh, with this uh, device configure, you can configure the Arduino to have various functions that you that you write yourself, like custom functions written in C or C++. You can upload those um, to the Arduino. Um, turn that off quick, and then I'll upload that. Um, and so what, what this basically enables you to do is write any kind of Arduino function. Um, you know, here we're going to blink an LED, but you can obviously do much more complicated hardware things. Um, you know, upload that, that will be on the Arduino, and now with device execute, we can now execute that device. So, as you can hopefully see, the little blue LED flashes for a very, very short amount of time. Um, so, a future feature of this will be the translation of Wolfram language code into Arduino code, so you'll be able to write these functions in, in the Wolfram language to be uploaded to Arduino. Um, so, as I was saying before, there are lots and lots of work that have been put into building these libraries and these shields for the Arduino. Um, and so, for example, there's the servo, uh, the servo library for controlling servos, or there's here's a um, handwritten library that I wrote myself that blinks an LED for Morse code, or here's the Vernier uh, library. But you can upload all of these libraries to be used with the Arduino. So what this basically allows you to do is, if you have a shield or hardware device, it's very easy to plug it into the Arduino, and then in Mathematica you can write up a quick little driver that uses that library uh, to interface with it. So here what I've done is I've written a SparkFun Vernier interface shield driver. Um, and so I've already opened the driver, so I don't need to do that. But So we can read here, and so... Um, what, what's really cool about this specific driver is with Vernier sensors, um, the Arduino can pull the uh, sensor to actually see what kind of sensor is attached. So here we can see this is a um, dual range force sensor, which is on the 50 Newton calibration range. Um, and we can here we can see uh, it's a, have, it has units of Newtons as reported by the sensor. Uh, we can see what the calibration data is, the calibration equation type, the intercept, blah, blah, blah. All of that, all of that is automatically gotten from the sensor. And so if I were to plug in a different sensor, all of this would change. Um, and all of the device read options would, would change or reflect that. So here we're going to uh, push on the sensor really hard um, to show that it maxes out at about 50, 50 newtons. So there you can see, oh, I guess it goes up to 60 newtons. But um, uh, so, so you can see if we were to change it to 10, it would change, change to 10 newtons, basically as maximum. Um, there we can see the units or um, yeah so so it, it's really cool because it uses calibration data to determine the units for us and so we can use uh, all of the units functions in Mathematica so for example if we want to convert that to pounds here's you know almost zero newtons in pounds uh, but um, it, it has all these units built into it and so it's really useful for stuff like science experiments because you know units are built right into it um, 
And so what we're going to do last is we're going to uh, calculate the coefficient of friction between the new kind of science book and a table. Okay, so what we're basically going to do is we'll read from the sensor using device read time series as we very slowly increase the force with which we pull on the book. Um, so for the next 20 seconds, it will be um, gathering data basically as we pull on it. And the maximum of that will be the maximum uh, friction force that's given off, and that will we'll use that to calculate the uh, um, coefficient of friction. So once that quick finishes here, we'll do a list line plot of that and have a quick look at the data. Okay, so here. So we can see, well, it kind of goes off the screen here. I'm not sure why list line plot isn't working, but maybe if I go do you want to do, plot uh, range. Two. Oh, maybe. Yep, there we go. So we can see it maxes out around, oh, that looks like about 10, 10 newtons. But let's let's calculate what the actual maximum is. So if you take the max of the force data, I guess it's 9.85 newtons is the maximum. Um, so now what we're going to do is now we're going to measure how much it weighs. And so we'll pick up the book um, very carefully, obviously, and we'll reevaluate this to measure how much it weighs. So as we measure that, as soon as this finishes evaluating, but the maximum there will basically be the weight of the book in newtons. And if we remember correctly, the, uh, the coefficient of friction is defined as the ratio between the maximum, uh, resi the maximum friction force and the, the normal force, basically. So the normal force is going to be equal to the weight, so we can take the max of this again. And so here's our normal force, this 25 newtons. And here's our resistance force, this 9.85 newtons. So we'll divide those two, and we get 0 0.32 as our um, as our coefficient of friction. So thank you very much. Hi, my name is Tom Sherlock. I work here at uh, Wolfram Research, and uh, in addition to working in the user interface department, um, I um, also, in my copious spare time. I uh, like to do astronomy when I get the chance. And uh, so, of course, one of the things that uh, I've been doing is uh, seeing how Mathematica can make my astronomy hobby even easier and more rewarding. And one of the great things about Mathematica, in addition to being a powerful uh, computational tool, is it has uh, a lot of uh, data built into it. And that was one of the things that we're promoting in these later versions of Mathematica. One of the things that Mathematica has in particular is astronomical data. And, um, and you can easily access this and make use of it. So thinking about that and thinking that I like to uh, run my telescope, um, I use the recently introduced uh, serial connectivity package uh, in Mathematica 10 uh, to write a telescope control package. And the telescope control package will run on any version of Mathematica because all it requires is a serial port. For instance, it will run on the version of Mathematica that's running on this Raspberry Pi here, which I have plugged into the back of my telescope. So um, by doing that and having Mathematica look up the uh, coordinates of different astronomical objects, I can have it uh, set my telescope mount to point to those objects and start tracking them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to have Mathematica look up several different astronomical objects and then the scope will slew to that and then you could um, uh, either observe or take pictures. So um, the first thing I'm going to do is uh, right now the scope is in the park position which is kind of a neutral position but I'm going to have it uh, slew to uh, the great cluster in Hercules and it's uh, what it's doing right now is uh, it's looking up the coordinates uh, for M13, which is the great cluster in Hercules, and it's uh, transmitting them to the, the mount controller. So now the scope is pointed at uh, M13 in Hercules. Um, so now I'm going to, uh, so let's say I've taken some pictures or observed it for a while. Uh, now I'm going to point it at um, uh, the Ring Nebula. So it's looking up the coordinates of that. 
and it's uh, sending them to the uh, to the telescope device. Okay, and now I'm going to uh, point it to M56. And it's looking up the coordinates for that. And it's a little lower object right now. Of course, this is during the daytime, so it's uh, not going to be easy to observe them. And finally, I'm going to do M10. And the pause you're uh, observing is it's looking up the data for this, and then it's transmitting it to the telescope. There's basically two different types of telescope protocols that are widely in use today. There's the LX200 protocol and the Nexstar protocol. And the package I've written uh, will use both of those protocols to control um, almost all of the uh, consumer grade telescopes and telescope mounts that are sold today. Then when you're done, um, you can tell Mathematica to to put the scope back into the park position. And there it goes. So that's, that would be a complete observing session. And you could program it to automatically go through a sequence of objects. Uh, for instance, one of the things you might want to do with uh, this sort of control would be to uh, programmatically look for um, supernovas in a bunch of different galaxies. So you could set up your uh, Mathematica package to uh, have a list of galaxies that may or may not have supernovas in them and then through the course of the night, it would uh, go to any one of uh, the galaxies in the sequence. It would take a picture and then proceed to the next galaxy. And then you could use image processing techniques to see if there's a new star in that galaxy. People automate uh, uh, supernova hunts this way uh, all the time, but this is one way you could do it with Mathematica. Um, now, tomorrow, uh, we're gonna actually take this uh, setup out into the field, as it were, and uh, try to get some pictures of, of the moon or something like that. So uh, we'll, when I see you again, uh, we'll be back in the field. On the U of I campus, you can see me setting up the telescope. I'm inserting the Pi cam into the telescope's eyepiece holder. There I'm connecting the serial cable to control the mount, and there the Pi cam is instructing the telescope uh, to point towards the moon. This is all running in Mathematica on the Pi cam. There you can see it's pointing at the moon, and here you can see it's just captured an image of the moon. You can see the craters down there in the lower right hand and upper right hand corners. And there you go.